Welcome to the Lone Star Keto Podcast. I'm your host, Amber. My vision for this podcast is to showcase experts in the keto carnivore community, as well as those who have compelling stories that inspire and give others hope. My wish is that no one has to suffer like I did. If you find value in this podcast, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification button. And as always, feel free to share. Thank you so much for your support. Hi, I'm Amber and welcome to the Lone Star Keto Podcast. Today we have a special guest with us, Stephanie Jones, and she's going to be sharing some of her journey. She's had to deal with so much in her life and she is so determined and so positive. I had to reach out and ask for her to come on the podcast because I think she has so much special things to share with y'all. She's so positive. Anyway, welcome, Stephanie. Hi, Amber. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for giving me a reason to put on lipstick for the first time. (laughs) Hey, I feel you, girl. I put on makeup when I do this when we go out. That's about it. I pretty much stay in my pajamas. Matter of fact, I have my pajama bottoms on right now. So there you go. (laughs) Too funny. Well, I, I really appreciate you coming on. And I know, you know, this is a little bit uh, nerve wracking for you, but uh, I'm really happy that, yeah, (laughs) it's okay. We're all a little bit nervous, right, at first. Okay, so I want to get a little bit of background for you, for those those that don't know you, just a little bit about some of your uh, health struggles and okay. we'll get into more detail later. So just kind of give a broad overview. And, and what, are you, what are you doing right now, like for, for a living? <laughs> okay, so I am 48 years old. Um, and uh, I, I recently uh, began work as a heavy equipment operator. I work on a road and bridge crew, <laughs> not your typical mommy job, uh, but I'm a single mom. I, um, I was a stay at home mom for 15 years. And then, you know, life happened. So, um, here I am. And, um, I, over the years I struggled with, um, well, I've lived with PTSD, manic depression, bipolar spectrum disorder, and, um, major anxiety for over 30 years. Um, and, uh, you know, I've struggled with weight and addiction issues and pretty much anything that you could imagine. And, um, so here I am dealing with a hand that life gave me and I'm finding healing and mental health. And I am, uh, without medication for the first time in three decades. That's so. amazing. And I, <laughs> I totally understand what that feels like. It is the most liberating thing. And, you know, I think so many people don't really understand that they can do something. They've been told that, you know, oh, like with being a type two diabetic, you will, you know, just have to be on insulin. That's just your life. You can't reverse it kind of thing. And also with mental issues, uh, you know, there's such a stigma with that anyway. And then to, you know, oh, well, we just have to control it with drugs or whatever that to have, you know, hope. And that's what I want you to talk about today. First of all, let's talk about the mental uh, issues and the PTSD. I want some background on that. Dig a little bit deeper and how it's affected you. Okay. So without going into all of the gory details, um, I will say that when I was 18 years old, I was abducted and um, I was held captive by some terrible people for a period of four months. And so that happened from September to January. So um, we'll just leave that there. But through all these years, I didn't know that trauma anniversary was a real a a real thing so the body um and and of course i'm a tbi which is a traumatic brain injury survivor as part of that too um i didn't know the body actually uh has trauma anniversary at that time of year even though i might not remember events the body feels the physical pain the body feels the despair the body goes through those things people call it flashbacks hypervigilance there's a whole gamut of things that go along with that. And um, I didn't know that that could heal. I didn't know that foods could, um, foods can make that worse. <laughs> I didn't know any of these things because I did what any of us do 
I just had took all the pills that the doctors gave me, you know, one for, um, you know, one for anxiety and one to help me sleep and one for insomnia and one for nightmares. And, and the meds were just fighting themselves in my body for years, which of course caused weight gain, which caused bleeding from gums, which caused memory loss. I mean, it was awful, awful. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What were you eating at the time? Like before you, we'll talk about your, the, the newer way you're eating, but what right. were you eating at the time? Um, well, like I, I've said, I, I, I dealt with addiction issues and not like so much chemical dependency, but I it was addicted to um, craving anything that made me feel happy at the time. So I emotionally ate, um, I binge ate, I would just stuff myself. It was gross. Um, you know, when I drank, I drank a lot. When I smoked, I smoked a lot. And um, <laughs> so I had energy drinks and baked goods because I was the mom that did all the class parties and baked all the sweets. And that was my love language was cooking. So um, yeah, <laughs> just everything. Yeah. And, and how at the time, I'm sure you didn't really notice that how, how much that food affected you, but now you do know. Oh, Explain yeah. a little bit of how that part works, like getting good nutrition. What does that have to do with helping you heal from something like PTSD? Okay, well, I am very uh, stubborn and it takes something really bad happening for me to learn the lesson. <laughs> So, um, what happened was in November of 2018, I went to the doctor and, um, she said, well, I was, I was 224 pounds. Um, she said, you have, uh, you're, you're diabetic. I was diagnosed with COPD and emphysema and, um, you know, I just had chronic fatigue and pain and I dealt with anxiety and depression and blah, 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 blah. And, I got scared. Like I, I went home that day and I was sitting on my bed in my bat cave, you know, just in the dark surrounded, literally fanned out on the bed around me, all the medications that I like, we have to take this in the morning and you have to take this for anxiety and you have to take this for your diet and this for your blood and, uh, blah, blah. I had an inhaler. I just went, I don't want this. And, um, and a friend called me that day to check on me. And uh, I'll never forget. I was like, ah, I've given up all of my vices. Like all I have is food and cigarettes. And he says, well, yeah, that's just it. You don't get to flea bargain your way into health and being okay. You've got to give up all these things before you're going to, you know, have any sort of healing. And man, I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> but no, <laughs> but I'm cheap and I did not want to be linked to paying for prescriptions for the rest of my life. So I wanted a way out. And so I got on Google, I got on YouTube, I got on everything. That was the last day I smoked cigarettes. It was November 12th. And, um, and that was how I stumbled into the ketogenic diet. And everything that I've learned since then on this healing journey was nothing I was searching for, but I'm fascinated because all of a sudden, you know, my mental health is clearing, you know, I'm dealing with resentments from the past. It's, it's mind, body, and spirit. I'm exercising. It's the whole package. You can't just fix one part. Yeah. I have to work on all of it together. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think a lot of people don't really understand that, that in order to heal with anything, whether it's a mental illness, whether it's autoimmune or, you know, uh, losing weight, obesity, um, it, it, you have to have the, all the, the pieces to the puzzle. It's not just diet. Diet is huge, but there's also sleep, there's activity, there's mental health help, you know, like you got to really stress management. And that's something I'm dealing with right now. So I know how stress affects my body and it's terrible. And if you don't have that element, even if you have the best diet in the world, 
you're not going to reap the benefits as much because you don't have all the pieces in place. And the more pieces you put in place, the better. And I think people need to understand that because I think with you, with your diet, it helped you in a lot of ways. It probably made you feel like you wanted to exercise a little bit more. And then you started feeling a little bit better. And then you're more open to being able to deal with the outside issues. Well, not so outside, but the ones that are traumatizing you inside that, that you have to deal with, but there was too much noise. It kind of describe that a little bit about, about how that whole process. So, okay. Um, well, I started the ketogenic diet, uh, like anybody just kind of seeking for something different and et cetera. And that was really great. But then I met this lady who she said, well, I'm doing carnivore and you ought to look into it. And okay. So I started tracking everything. I used a, you know, a tracker and it, uh, this tracks my sleep and it has a ox pulse and I'm kind of super nerdy this way. Um, but that's how I learned everything I've learned has been through my own trial and error. So with carnivore, I thought, well, uh, Jordan Peterson says, well, you can do anything for 30 days, right? Okay. I'll try it. Well, within two weeks, I felt good, like of, of just doing just meat. And I had had my gallbladder removed. So I thought, oh, this is going to be really hard. No, it's not. You know, um, my body, it, what was hard was this, my stubborn head. But as I removed all of the cloudy stuff, all of a sudden within two weeks, I had this mental clarity, like I feel good, like euphorically good. And that was really weird because I didn't know what it was to feel good or happy. Mm-hmm. And um, as I've stayed on this journey, I mean, yes, weight loss, I've only lost 20 pounds in the last eight months, but I've gone from a size 16 to an eight. People ask, do you have to exercise? No, you don't have to. You just want to because you feel good. (laughs) Um, So yes, I've decided I'm going to run a half marathon by my 50th birthday because I can (laughs) Um, if I stop injuring myself. But I started learning little things that um, really make a difference. Uh, You see me post about BDNF. Uh, so basically that's the little receptors in our brain that process stress. When we eat sugar and carbohydrates, the brain stops making them. So a lot of times we have, you know, like I even watch my kids and they're having anxiety and stressed out. And I'm like, well, yeah, you just had a soda and donuts and junk for breakfast. You don't have the tools that your brain needs to process stress. So by removing those things, our brain is able to arm itself with its own defense. And I wish a doctor had told me about that. Like I, I wish so bad. Why, why did they just say, Hey, tell me about your diet. Yeah, we, we don't get that. And I think that's so sad because it is so crucial and it may not be the cure, but it can help to remove all that, what I call noise. So your body can function properly and you can deal with those things. And I'm really glad that you kind of figured it out and stumbled upon it because most doctors don't really understand that they weren't taught nutrition like they should have been. And they don't have that all the time in the world to go out and do research. They, you know, just believe what they're, you know, told and that's it. Yeah. And that's, so, you know, and that's the thing is I tell everybody, I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not an expert in any way. I am a mom who is taking ownership of my health and it's amazing. And you can do it too. Like that's, that's my, that's what I want everybody to know. And everybody, we're not all one size fits all, you know, some of us can do salt, some can't, some eat extra fat for fuel. Some, you know, they don't, we're, we're all different, but if you can, just keep trying things. You'll find what works. <laughs> you exactly. Know, keep learning, keep trying stuff. Um, I was gifted a uh, keto mojo by a friend and I had a really cool uh, experience. And this is, there's no science behind this at all that I am aware of. This was just my own experiment. But uh, my, my moods are direct correlation to the weather. 
And, um, you know, we say people get depressed when the weather is coming, but with my PTSD and so on, I'm like a human barometer. Um, my kids will know I'm not okay before I am. I'll start stuttering, stammering. I get brain fog. So the day that I got this keto mojo, I was trying to figure out how to work and I was fasted. So I was just frustrated and I was like, ah, I can't figure this out right now. It's too complicated. And he says, just check your blood right now. You haven't eaten anything. Check your blood right now. So I did. And I was so frustrated and my blood glucose was like up at a 90, which is kind of high for a fasted state. And then it started raining. And what I learned was as the barometric pressure drops, that affects my cortisol, my glucose, like everything spikes. And so there's this whole chemical reaction. So I remained fasted and I checked it again in the morning and it had gone back down. But that's something I am working on, you know, monitoring because it's so interesting that even fasted, the body can have those reactions to stress. Yeah, that that makes sense, I suppose, because I know like for me, when it's cloudy, rainy, kind of overcast like it is today, it it does make me feel a little more lethargic and kind of blah, but like the pretty sunshiny weather where it's not ridiculously hot, you're like, you're happy, you're jolly. So that makes sense because when you you do feel those moods, it does affect stress levels. So it does make sense. Yeah, like I said, there's no, I don't know any science behind it. I just know that me personally, it directly affects me. And so there's days where I'll wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm all by myself and oh, my shoes are untied and you know, just <laughs> stuff. And then I walk outside. I'm like, oh, it's raining. So now it makes sense. And I can go, okay, it's not the end of the world, but now I can hope. Whereas prior to carnivore way of eating, like I would have downward spiraled. I would have crawled in bed and been hibernating until, you know, the next day. Yeah, I'm real curious to kind of see how that plays out for you now that you're kind of aware of it and you can kind of track it. I'd be real interested in that. We'll have to do like a live or something when you have more data just to kind of see. Like you said, it's not, you know, science back necessarily, but who knows? I mean, (laughs) maybe it is and we just don't know about it yet. But uh, for for you to be able to do that with your own body, I think that's super cool. That is something I would have not really thought about. I, I never did either, but you know, if that's, I, I guess a big piece of the puzzle is being receptive to different possibilities. Like, Hey, maybe this is a factor. Maybe this is not. Um, I know that, uh, there's women who have seizures that are, it's called catamenial. Um, and these women were tracking, you know, they're epileptic or whatnot, but they were having seizures at the same time. And what it was, was about a week before their cycle would start. And it was directly affected by, you know, by the tides and the, the month and, and whatnot. But so there's, you know, it's kind of the same principle. While this is not the same thing, there's different ebbs and flows and pressures that influence our body. So just learning to listen to what your body needs. Yes. <laughs> and, and I think uh, being carnivore specifically, but also keto too, and yeah. with the, the more clarity and the more openness, the, the more you're able to listen to your body and, and hear those signals where before it was hijacked by the crap we were putting in our bodies, the seed oils, the, the sugar, the processed foods, the weed, yeah. all that, that junk. And Absolutely. so you, you can't, you know, focus like you can now. So I think that is so incredibly interesting. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So we'll keep tracking that because I do want to follow up on that. I think that's super cool. Now, as far as the mental struggles you've had, you you've mentioned it's not just the PTSD. You're also dealing with anxiety and the bipolar spectrum. What, What is that called? Bipolar spectrum disorder. Um, that is something that is, uh, you know, bipolar, you have manic highs. Like when I'm up, woo, I want everybody to be up. And when I'm down, oh my gosh, I'm like the victim and everyone's out to get me. And it's horrible. And bipolar spectrum disorder is, so it's not just depressed, it's ups and downs. It's manic uh, money spending. It's all of the things that come along, but that is different. And I'm actually thankful for that 
unlike whatever the term is, uh, bipolar, the, I'm not trying to do quotations, but whatever, like the <laughs> regular bipolar is, bipolar spectrum disorder is basically uh, kind of a spawn from a, a head injury, which I have had a couple. Mm. And so the difference is uh, people who are bipolar can become addicted to, uh, you know, substances and whatnot. The difference for me is I enjoyed substances, food, whatever it was, um, just because it made me feel good, but I never actually had a chemical dependence to anything. I just, I liked things. <laughs> I liked bad habits a lot, <laughs> but now I reverse that and I like good habits now. So, so uh, talk about the importance of mindset, because I know you work very hard with this reframing and, you know, thinking about things differently. Talk a little bit about that. Um, so I met a group of ladies a couple of years ago, uh, after I'd gone through the divorce and everything that if, if, if they, they taught me so much, it was through a women's ministry, but what I learned the most was the power of the word yes. Um, I think our whole lives, so many of us are taught like, oh, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. No, you can't. Do as we believe it. And I would come to these women with a different obstacle, like, oh, you know, I, I need to get a job, but I can't get here. And they were like, why can't you? Huh? <laughs> you know, well, and, and so they made me kind of evaluate everything that I would say I can't do. And they were like, sure, we can do that. Like you can do this. You can. And it was, yes, yes, you can. And for me, it was just having someone believe in me, taught me to believe in myself. Um, what, and, and whatever the reason is, whatever your why is, you know, I, I just encourage anyone to find that. But for me, it was, I made a video just yesterday. I was running and I was arguing with myself, like, oh, I've come far enough. I can, you know, I, I don't need to run all the way to the end of the sidewalk. And I thought, why, why can't I? Because it's hard. What? <laughs> you know, and so I do that constantly. I argue with myself, but like you said, it's reframing my, you know, whatever it is I have to tackle that day. Well, why can't I? I don't want to. <laughs> That's pretty much what it comes down to is I have to want something enough to do it. That's very <laughs> true. That's very, very true. Now let's talk a little bit. It, it was last week where you just had that week from hell. Was it last week? The bee stings, the poison ivy. Go through your whole week and I want to know how you handled it because what I saw on Instagram, I was pretty impressed because I'm going to tell you what, if that happened to me, I'm not so sure I would have handled it as good as you did. And I know you still struggle with so much internally. So how did you go about that? I mean, I mean you seem very positive to me, even though you were just slapped around. Because it's just funny. Like, there's no way these things happen to one person. I am the person you could draw a line with chalk on the ground. I would trip over it and injure my pancreas. I, <laughs> you know, so I'm at work. I got, I'm 48 years old. I've never been stung by a bee before. I, uh, I, I got into a thing of yellow jackets, which are on the ground. Um, and I was using a chainsaw cutting down things and, uh, the bees started getting me and they got on my hands and then my pants and all I could think of was Tommy boy. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm visual now. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I mean, I was laughing at myself and it was yelling and it was crazy. And I threw the chainsaw and then I had to go retrieve it. And it was tangled up in poison Ivy. And apparently I am allergic to poison Ivy and I don't react well to medications. So I, and I also didn't know because I've never been in poison ivy before. Um, <laughs> so I didn't know not to scratch and then it starts spreading. And then I pulled my mask down and I got around my mouth and it, it, by day three, I ended up in the emergency room over it um, with blisters and it <laughs> awful so then they gave me steroids which I did not Ooh. like 
because then I didn't sleep for the first two days and um, it helped my hands, but my heart was racing. I gained eight pounds in five days. I, and I was like, this is awful, (laughs) but um, I think I just handle it now with comedy. Like I I don't ask what else can happen because I will find (laughs) out. So I I just challenge uh, accepted. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I I just have to go, okay, that just happened. I can either dwell on it or I can move on with the rest of my day. Like I have to, I I definitely acknowledge the stress factors without giving power to them to control the day. Um, Control the controllables. I can control what I eat. I can control how I react to that. I could cry about it and whine about it and play the victim, but that doesn't do me any good. So, um, yep, I acknowledge, hey, these things happen. And then I you go, okay, but I have a warm home. I have hot coffee. I have bacon. Life is okay. Bacon. Yeah, there you go. Everything <laughs> is better with bacon. Now, how would you have handled this before? Like when you were, you know, on all the medic- medications, you were still oh. really suffering. How would you have handled that week? Oh, yeah, I would have lost it. I would, I would have called in this work. I would have missed, I would have skipped work. I would have, uh, yeah, I would have whined for attention. I would have probably stayed in bed and wrapped my hands and, you know, ordered pizza and just ate cake. Uh, it would have been a spiral of self-destruct. You know, the doctor um, gave me the option. He's like, well, I don't know if you can use your hands. And he was willing to write me um, a note to take four days off work. And I thought, it's some blisters. Like, I don't, but back then, I would have done that. I would have been, oh, here's my excuse to stay home and do nothing. And uh, I don't need to do that anymore. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, okay. And, and with you having to deal with all these different things, you still struggle. You are not just miraculously cured. No. <laughs> Talk a little bit about that too. So people can understand that you absolutely can do something to improve your situation, but that it's also something that is ongoing. You don't just one day wake up and go, Oh, everything is peachy. I never, ever have to do anything again. I'm cool. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Um, now I will say since I have started my carnivore journey, I feel so good. I don't, I don't ever want to deal that with the way I was. Um, but I do have to make a choice. I, there's, I have cheated. I have had cheat days. And I I tell people to cheat is to practice the art of deception for personal gain. Right. So if you wouldn't cheat on your spouse, if you would expect, you know, you can't have be an alcoholic and just have a little bed or whatever your vice is, um, you're, you're cheating on yourself. And like I'm learning to make myself a priority because if my health isn't good, I'm no good to anybody else. Um, (sighs) it is a choice. I do. PTSD is a brain injury. Um, so it doesn't magically go away. There are factors that, that, like I said, you know, trauma anniversary, uh, hypervigilance, um, night terrors. Those are things that, I can't control, however, by eliminating the foods that antagonize those, um, I, I, I can control the controllables. Um, I'm sleeping for the first time in three decades. I have had insomnia since I was a kid. I've had night terrors. I can actually sleep, well, almost all night because I have to get up and pee. But, <laughs> but I, I can sleep a whole eight or nine hours a night now and I make it a priority to go to bed. Yes, I might miss out on an activity, but my health is worth it. I could not agree more. And, I, and a lot of people don't understand that or I, I, I didn't even after struggling for 40 whatever years, I did not really fully appreciate the health aspect of it. It was always about 
losing weight, looking good on the outside, aesthetics. It was all about that. Because if I just got down to this side, my size, my life would be just peachy. And as we know that that's not what it is, but once you achieve real health and you actually understand that, then you go back and you say things that used to roll your eyes about, you know, health as well, you know, those kind of things. I always thought, Oh, that's older people worry about that. You know, it's like, like the people that say, Oh, don't look at the scale. Don't Okay, I weigh myself before I pee, after I pee, <laughs> then I have my coffee, like after lunch, you know, naked with clothes on, you know, yeah. <laughs> I did that too. I did that too. You know, um, <laughs> yeah, we, we do these things and, and, and I, I had to finally stop doing like, if only this, if only that. I finally learned to just kind of be where I'm at and that makes a big difference. Very much so. And, and I think that's very hard for a lot of people because again, we're so worried about the aesthetics. We're so, you know, sure that if we just achieve that perfect body that you see in the magazine or that you're told you're supposed to have that miraculously rainbows and unicorn corns and all that stuff. And that is, that's not the truth at all. There's so much more, you can be thin and look great and have this picture perfect body, but it doesn't mean you're healthy. It doesn't mean you're mentally healthy. Yeah. Uh, And uh, I mean, and there's, like I said, it's, it's mind, body, and spirit. I I had to, um, well, I didn't have to, I chose to kind of do a healing uh, journey um, where I made a list of all of the resentments I had with, with people, with food, with whatever. And then I went to um going okay well so what was my hand in that you know that was awful because I had I had to like write down and make a list of like what what I was responsible for like you know whether it was my mom whether it was the attackers whether it was whatever okay did I okay no I was a victim here like no I was you know like no no she did that (laughs) and I was you know I, I had to address each resentment and then um okay, so what were the immediate effects of that? And what were the long-term effects of that? And why am I harboring this resentment? Can I do anything about it? And if not, I was able to let it go. And Hmm. that was a very, you know, the things I was able to make amends or make adjustments to or have forgiveness, that gave me a lot of power because I was able to say, all right, I'm ready to let that go. And it was hard. It was not easy but it's given me a lot of freedom now for sure. Yeah. And, you know, as a coach for me, I rarely talk about the actual food aspect of it. It's all this other stuff, the, the the mental, the emotional aspect of it, they need the support, they need the accountability, or they just have issues that are causing them to be addicted to food that they haven't dealt with. And that's a lot of it. Now I'm not a you know psychologist or psychiatrist, but if we can identify that there's something deeper, then they know that they can go get help for that to help fix that. Because it's not always just about, oh, well, you fix your diet, everything's peachy. There, there's yeah. things that you still have to deal with. It just makes it a <laughs> heck of a lot easier to be clear headed. That's the point. Sure. Yeah, sure. And it, you know, you, like you said, you we we'd seek comfort from all these other issues and food is kind of a safe thing. And it's at celebrations and it's at gatherings and like everything we do is centered around food. So here I am going, okay, so I'm single. I'm a carnivore. I don't know how to meet people or do food in public. So, and then now we have the pandemic. So now I'm going, Hmm, it it made me kind of go, what do I like to do? Like on the event that I want to get together with people I don't want it to be centered around food Mm -hmm. what activities do I like to do and boy that was hard because I mean I think any mom knows it's real easy to lose ourselves because everything you do with kids and and you know the Mm -hmm. the kids and and, and you get put on a back burner and then all of a sudden one day somebody says well you know what do you like to do and you go what? <laughs> yep. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know, so, um, so that's been another thing is if people say, why do you run? Well, cause I've found something that I can do and it's not centered around food. And 
you know, I, that's why I'm always taking pictures of things I see because those are things that make me smile through the day. <laughs> Yeah, and I love your positivity because, you know, as I'm going through my feed, I'm like, oh, there's Stephanie's, you know, post and you're always smiling and you're doing your push up challenge and, oh. and you, you talk about things, whether it's good or bad, you, you acknowledge that it's maybe not the best time right now. Your, your day's not going so good, but this is what I'm going to do. And I think that's such a powerful message. Ah, oh, well, thank you. Yes, I hate the push-up challenge. Cobus <laughs> uh, Creel started that, and I, I started joining him. And I, I'm not gonna lie, I hate every single one. I don't like them. I hate push-ups so much. But when I saw that photo of my arms, and I went, "Wow!" Because every woman has that body part that we don't like, and mine has always been my arms. I've been so self-conscious of my arms, um, and it's funny even though I've lost 70 pounds right now, the two things I've always been most self-conscious about um, were my skin and my arms. I always have had horrible acne. I remember my 30th birthday laying in bed crying, uh, watching the infomercials for, for Proactive. Like, I just want that because I had horrible acne. And uh, that's just another thing that carnivore is helping with my skin. And, um, but yeah, and those push-ups are, you know, <laughs> I hate them, but they're, they're, they're doing their, their job. So <laughs> I remember doing the squat challenge and I hated that, but it did make a difference. I started getting a little bit firm and, you know, it's like my legs were starting to look pretty good, but you know, I hated every minute of it though. I'll yeah. it. <laughs> I hate lifting weights too. I'll just be honest. I absolutely hate it. I could do I aerobics know. all day long, you know, the dancey type of stuff all day long, not a problem one after the other, after the other, but weights, I'm like, <laughs> wah, I don't, I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I should, I need to, I, 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 we got one of those X bars, the X three bar or whatever, um, uh -huh. that, that a lot of people are using. And I did it one time, you know, trying to get, you know, the feel for it and all. And ugh, bleh, I don't like the feel of it at all. I got to get my butt back in gear, but I did not like it. So like, I was I hoping it would be something I could do. That's in a little space and something I, I didn't have to spend tons of time doing because you're only uh, do it for like 15 minutes, like, I don't know, five times a day, uh, five times a week or something like that. So it was very minimal. And I was like, I can do that. And then I'm like, mm, yeah, I haven't done it again. Mm. I spend, I spend a minute and a half on my pushups and that seems like an eternity. <laughs> what about those dang planks? Did you ever do that? You talk about the longest minute of your life is when you're in a plank. Funny that you should mention that. Uh, there's a girl on my feed, uh, Mama Jewel, and she is, uh, she, she keeps blasting me. She's like, come on, Stephanie. She's like, plank next. And I, I've been kind of like putting it off. But uh, it's, it's, even with my push ups, I've been having to do them on my knees because I can't bear weight on my foot yet, but I'm getting there. But she was like, well, you can do the. I haven't been doing push ups. My excuse has been, poison ivy nonsense on my hands so she says well you can do planks on your elbows and I was like ah oh. <laughs> and then I come back to eat my own words going well why can't I because it's hard I don't want to so now I feel like I've been issued that challenge so you will see a video probably tomorrow of me doing a plank it's the most boring video ever to watch <laughs> hanging out <laughs> and I'm going to put a bunch of laughing little emojis down there because I know the backstory now <laughs> that is too funny. okay let's talk I want to I want to talk a little bit about uh you were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes can you talk yeah. a little bit about that um well my doctor had been this is funny she, she had been seeing me for two years prior to that and um I was obese. And um, so her solution was uh, prescribing me phentermine. <laughs> and <laughs> um, so now I was on phentermine. I'm overweight and eating everything. But I, the one thing she said to me, she said, if you have to give up one thing from your diet, what would it be? And I was like, well, I'm not going to give up my, my, my coffee creamer. And she said, 
let's look into that. And so I was, I loved my coffee made French vanilla creamer with all this stuff. So we figured out that I was consuming upwards of 300 grams of sugar per day and over 1200 calories in just my coffee creamer alone. Cause I would drink coffee wow. with all, all day. And she was like, that's going to be the thing. Like that's, you have to let that go. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And, uh, but I mean, and you know, that stuff is syrup. So it's base is oil. And, um, oh man, I, I had no idea. I had no idea how bad that stuff was. And then you look at the sugar-free ones, which are still syrup. And I, man, <laughs> so she said that that's going to be the first thing you have to get rid of. And my, I mean, my, my numbers were like in the three hundreds and it was awful. Wow. Um, but like I said, that was the day I came home and I just, um, I, I, I basically did a 10 day detox from everything that I had been on. Uh, I said, I, I don't want this. This is not what I want. And, um, uh, so I, I started ketogenic. I started uh, doing intermittent fasting and um, that was November. By January, I was not on any medications. Um, I don't recommend this kids. It's not doctor supervised. I chose this on my own because I'm stubborn. <laughs> I have to say that. But, um, but uh, yeah, by January and then January 1st was when I just went carnivore. I said, like, you know, we're just going to do this. And so through trial and error, I tried reintroducing things after I had gone carnivore for a while. And wow, the, uh, the way my body reacted, let me know that I no longer need to eat. And mo- majority of that stuff, I dealt with oxalate dumping and, you know, ugh. <laughs> yeah, not fun. <laughs> but it was uh, by March. Um, I started seeing a different doctor, by the way, someone that wasn't going to just throw meds at me. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and I, when I saw the new doctor, I said, I am either going to be your best patient or your worst patient. Cause I'm not going to take any medicines. I feel healthy and I want to stay that way. And she just kind of laughed and she said, well, we're going to look at your numbers. And then we waited until June and she did a full panel of blood work. And I don't know if you saw that video I posted and I read all my lab results. Um, and I was like a little kid. I was like, ha everything you said was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll she have went, to add that one. <laughs> yeah, she Whoa. was great. <laughs> she was great because she said, okay. She said, uh, everything you're telling me goes against everything I've ever learned or practiced in medical school. But if your numbers are good, then I will support you. And if they're not, then we're going to have a different conversation. And for me, that was a win. You know, that was just a, finding a doctor who's willing to listen was great. And she ran my panel and she was like, you know, you, you, your blood work looks like that of a 30 year old athlete. You know, my blood pressure was a uh, hundred over 75. My, um, my fasted glucose was what, what 75, something like that. Wow. Nice. She was like, you, you know, you look great. And my A1C, like all of my numbers, everything looked great. And she said, well, I don't really know how to react to this. Cause I'm supposed to tell you that eating all meat is not healthy. She said, but the numbers don't lie. So, um, so now I have a doctor who is supportive and my numbers look good. So I'm going to keep doing it. That's awesome. I, I, the message that I, I want to be very clear on is that there, there are so many type two diabetics. We're not talking type one, type two who yeah. have been told that it cannot be reversed, that you just have to keep, you know, up in your insulin or whatever. Yeah. Talk about that because you did it. I was pre-diabetic. I was never full-blown diabetic, but I reversed that very easily, very quickly. Well, I, I mean, I, I think that the biggest misunderstanding is what insulin does and what its job is in the body and insulin resistance. And if you fast, it's going to burn all that off. It's like a reset. It's a do-over. If, 
I think I saw somebody saw had it was a, a cartoon thing, and they said if you want to reduce your glucose, stop eating glucose. <laughs> and it was so simple, <laughs> you know, because we're taught our whole lives that you've got to get your fruits in and you've got to get your fiber in and and all these things and the, the vitamin C, you're going to get scurvy. Well, no, you're not. You only need that to break down on these plants that you're eating. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, and I just come back to that. You can do anything for 30 days, eliminate stuff and just see what happens. I encourage you take ownership of your, just ask questions, question the doctor, just because they wear a white coat doesn't mean they know what's right for you. So that's exactly uh, right. Uh, because we are all different. And just because the textbook says this, you know, the same thing with our kids in school, you can teach the same lesson to all of them, but they're not all going to learn it the same way. And so the doctors can tell everybody the same thing, but your body's not going to be receptive to it the same way as, you know, hers is or his is, is, you know, we all respond differently. Try it see what happens, ask questions, learn stuff. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and that's always my biggest message is to experiment specifically if things have not changed and you keep doing the same thing over and over and it's not working. It only took me 40 years to figure that out, but right? you know, get a clue, <laughs> but you're told and it's hammered in your head. It's your fault. You're not doing it right. You didn't, you know, do what you're supposed to do. You didn't exercise enough. You didn't cut your food enough, et cetera. And yeah. you know, yeah. that message is so hard and wired into our heads that we do keep doing again, trying to get it quote right. And yeah. I think that's it. it that's so sad to me, but if something isn't working, try something new. What do you got yeah. to lose? It's already not working, you know? Yeah. And, 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 you know, and through this, by eliminating all of the carbohydrates and the sugars, well, now if there's, if there's like this whole package of things that's happening. Cause now my insulin is at bay and you know, now it's normal and good and healthy. Um, cholesterol is a good, good thing. <laughs> you know, it's not a bad thing. Um, you know, like there's all these little things that I'm learning by, by eliminating these things. Now my brain can make the little neurons, the little BDNF that it needs to, to process stress. Well, now I'm able to handle stress. So now I feel good. So now I'm going to exercise. Well, now I exercise and I can sleep at night. I mean, it's a whole chain reaction of things that work together. <laughs> It is so true. One kind of leads to the next, leads to the next. And next thing you know, <laughs> you know, you've got this big snowball of good stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, I see that all the time and it is very, very true. So, I, I, yeah, you, I mean, you, I'm sure you went through like the whole roller coaster of things. And then now you have energy to like keep up with grandbabies and how great no choice is that? Now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And you know, and another thing too, is I recognize now, of course I'm in a different part of my life right now, but, um, I, I do keep my grand grandbaby all day while my daughter's in school and I have like ridiculous patients. And I know that is part of the aging process that versus you being in the middle of it as a parent, there is a difference, but still <laughs> I'm like, so incredibly calm, you know, it just really nothing she does. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm not tired by the end of the day, cause I sure am, but you know, she, she, just, you know, does her typical, she's almost coming up on two in January. So she's starting to have that little attitude and, you know, she'll look at you and go, no. Yeah. But, but it, you know, it just doesn't really phase me. I just kind of laugh it off and, you know, deal with the situation where back in the day, I would have just flipped crap, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think there's yeah. something about that for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Cause but they were back yeah we would have been like oh my gosh okay, 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 okay. and now you're just like oh okay that just happened yeah. you know yeah <laughs> it is crazy okay so let me just be clear you have reversed your type 2 diabetes yes yes I and, have. and do, do you have like a time range of, of when you realized that it was dealt with oh how, yeah. how long did it take you so um um, well, let's see, I was diagnosed, uh, November of 2018. And then it was the following, uh, 
February. So it was like four months later when I um, got my first lab results back that were like, everything is still kind of iffy. The numbers look better, but you know, and then it was, uh, it was probably, I would say a full year before I committed to, um, I committed to carnivore way of eating and, um, well, let me take that back. That would have been 2019. So it was June of 2020 when I had the first full panel of blood work that gave me clean bill of health. So I was, it was about a year, year and a half total time. And that's only because I didn't go have a full panel check before then. It was probably better before then, but that was when I got that validation, that piece of paper that said, everything looks great. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I just had that done just out of curiosity. And um, it was so, so many years, because I just don't go to the doctor. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, getting that just to kind of see it, even though it's a snapshot in time, I understand, but still seeing it, you're like, dang, that looks good. You know, <laughs> I was quite happy with mine. I was dancing around. The only thing I had an issue with was cortisol. My cortisol was way off the charts, which is terrible. That is, yeah. I mean, when you have that imbalance, it's not a good thing. And, you know, started noticing some weight gain, you know, starting it in plus, I think I'm in the menopause. So, you know, it, it's, it's, you get a little bit of everything and I'm like, mm. so I'm yeah. having to really work on the stress management part of it, which you have to do daily. Right? Yes. Yes. Yes, um, I, I am now very aware, um, <clears throat> I, like I, with, with PTSD, there's instances where I would get to really whipped up um, and, and my mind starts going faster than I was capable of keeping up with it. And anyone that lives with this knows there's, there's the, the flashbacks, there's the, it, it's just a whole chain reaction of event. And once you get wound to that point, you, you can't just reel it in. Um, and so something that I have learned through a little bit of yoga and meditation is, uh, you know, acknowledging, okay, my feet are touching the floor. You know, I, I find things I can feel, I can physically touch, like I'm here, I'm in this moment right now. I can smell my coffee. I can feel my hair. I can touch my bedspread. It's soft. It's giving me comfort. You know, um, I find things I can see, I can smell, and that grounds me. Um, I, and so I am aware of things that are triggers, that are certain noises, foods, uh, sounds. Um, and so I'm able to avoid those things as, as best I can, you know. Uh, but learning what the triggers are makes it much more manageable because I can go, okay, I'm in this situation. There's these noises, there's these sounds that are really amping me up and I can choose to remove myself from that situation or I can choose to ground myself. I can breathe through it. And that, is it a cure-all? No, but by eliminating the foods that amplify things by learning breathing techniques and ways to reduce those stress, I can manage every single day without medication now. That's awesome. Okay. It really is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, and people who don't, haven't gone through what you've gone through, don't really appreciate the, the full uh, feeling of being able to kind of uh, move towards the other side. Like I said, I know you're still doing a lot of work, and, but, but you're so much better. You're in such a better place right now. And people don't understand how much work and how hard that is. Yeah. Well, okay. So I, one of the things that is my Achilles heel <laughs> is coconut cake. I love coconut cake. <laughs> so bad. Like and, um, <laughs> it's just sugar on sugar. It's so good. <laughs> but, um, I used to binge eat on Fridays, like when my kids were in school and I would go to eat, I would, I would get two orders of sushi. I would get six tacos and uh, an entire coconut cake, a half gallon of bride's cake ice cream, chips and dip, and a Coke. And I would come home and I would eat every bit of it. And um, then I would pass out in this disgusting food coma, hide all the evidence. And then when my kids got home, I'd be like, oh, let's go out to eat. It was gross, right? But the fallout of that would happen the next day 
um, as all that stuff got up in my brain. And I can remember uh, it, it was this year, it was right before I started my Carnivore 75 hard challenge. Um, and I, I ate stuff that I shouldn't have. And the next day, I don't know, my daughter said she was going somewhere. She's 19. And I was like, I get, 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 get texting her. I mean, just, I can't believe you're going to leave. I, how can you leave me like this? And that she was like, mom, like I'm going to whatever it was. It was not important, but I berated her over text for like 45 minutes. And she just said, I'm leaving because I can't deal with you. And then I was the victim and it was this horrible thing. And the next morning I woke up and it was like being blackout drunk going, what did I do? Wow. And that's how severely like the sugar and I look back and like my kids had to deal with me their whole life like this you know uh, just crazy now they know oh mom's having an off day we're gonna take advantage and go shopping because she'll spend money <laughs> but, <laughs> but um but yeah those days don't happen much anymore because I stay away from those foods <laughs> Well, I do think that's really important to be aware of what's affecting you, whether it's it's a, a food binge trigger or if it's like an emotional trigger, whatever it is, it kind of like all goes together. But the more aware you are of it, the more you can deal with it. Because I know like with me, like say depression or whatever, then I'd go to the refrigerator and get something to eat. Well, if you're not aware that you're doing that because you're, you're searching for comfort for, you know, that, that brain, you know, to be lit up in pleasure, whatever, you can't change anything if you're not aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's just something that comes over learning. I mean, just to over time and habit and, uh, and I learn slow because I'm stubborn. (laughs) Me too. I get it. (laughs) Trust me. Let's see. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. Um, we are cl- close on time. I, okay. Run me through a day. Okay. L- let me give you a scenario. Okay. You had just a bad day. Okay. You had an argument with, with when your kids, whatever, um, you stepped on a bee, um, <laughs> you know, just one thing after another, how do you break this down and deal with it? Like, what is your step through process when you, you know, realize, okay, whoo, I'm in this, you know, level of stress. Now I do this. Do you have a process? Do you have a step that you kind of. Um, a lot of times now, uh, um, you know, before I would have just gone out and had a cigarette and, you know, calm down. <laughs> that does no good. Uh, now I, I kind of just have to step back and I honestly, I'm very spiritual. So I kind of, kind of step back and, and I talk to God a lot and I'm like, okay, so (laughs) I know that this is not in my mind. Like this is actually happening. Like these are real events because before there was a time where I didn't know if stuff was in my head or really happening. Mm. So I acknowledge those things. I, okay, these things are happening. I am okay. And I kind of breathe. I take a step back and I go, okay, is there anything I can do about it right now? If there's nothing I can do about the situation, you know, okay. If I'm, I, yes, I can put bee sting ointment on here. Other than that, there's nothing I can do okay, I've got the rest of the day to face. I can't just make the day be a wash. So I have to consciously acknowledge the factors, breathe through it, and then take steps to continue on with the day. Because if I don't, I will downward spiral. So I, I, it it is important that I stop and acknowledge, you know, that's, that's all I can say, really. <laughs> no, that, that I think that's such a, a good point. And I think a lot of us don't do that, that, you know, we just, oh my gosh, and I'm guilty of this. This day just sucks. And then, you yeah. know, just pfft, whatever. Yeah. I think I'm going to go have me a glass of wine or whatever it is. I don't like wine. Oh, this oh yeah. And there's, there are those days where I, you know, and I'll call my daughter and be like, you know what? I'm done. Like I, I'm done with this day and I, I need a do over. And so it's okay to do that. You can restart your day at any point in the day. 
I acknowledge these things are happening. I don't give them power and I control the controllables. Like, okay, I can have the option to start the day over. So guess what? We're going to go and I'm going to get a steak and then we're going to watch a movie and not let that affect the rest of my day. So, um, I don't know. That's what works for me. <laughs> no, I, I think that that is awesome. And I think, you know, the more people that would do that, the, the better off you'd be, because there are things you can control. There are things that you can't control. And the ones that I can't control tick me off to no end. But, you know, like you said, sometimes you just have to let it go. So, you know, the more you practice that, the easier it becomes, I think. And that's something I know I need to work on. I got lots I need to work on. I'll admit that right now, but don't we all, right? We all have our own things. I'm a hot mess, but, you know. (laughs) Hey, you know, you admit it and roll with it. It's all good. And (laughs) y'all, y'all definitely need to go follow Stephanie. She is so positive. You would love her smile. She, she always, she likes, lights my world up when I, flipping through and I see your little smile and I'm like, okay, everything's right in the world. Now we got Stephanie's little smile. So make sure you follow and subscribe to my channel while you're here. And uh, Stephanie, thank you so very much for joining us and uh, talking about your experience. I think it's so important for people to hear these stories. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I will be the world's biggest cheerleader if you got me, because I, I know I, I just needed someone to believe in me and you have been an amazing person in my corner. And oh, well, thank you. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, you know, I, I love your stuff and thank you. Um, so, yep. And you guys follow me. I will be your biggest cheerleader too. I'll put all her information below. Don't you worry about it again. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you. Ah, thanks, Amber. Bye. <laughs> Bye.